Your friends are scrolling through short content, but you, my friend, you're here to learn. Welcome to Yara's Clips. The story of Sikhi begins with Guru Nanak. Year is 1469. It's a confrontation of what we now call Hinduism and Islam in Punjab. Those are the two dominant religions and confrontation in terms of ideas, in terms of even battles, in terms of ideologies and rulers. This is just the beginning of the Mughal dynasty in India, for example. You know, there's a lot of invasion that used to come from Middle East. And for example, at that time, Babur is coming. So that's the time in Punjab in a very, in fact, for your audience, if I say Guru Nanak put a very small village on the world map. That village now is called Nankana Sahib. It was called Rai Poidi Talwandi. In fact, I visited it several times. Where is it? It's a, the city is called Nankana Sahib. It is about uh, two hours from Lahore. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here comes an individual, if I may call it individual to present Guru Nanak. A child is born in that environment. And he puts uh, that small city on the world map because of what? Because of what he brought, the revolutionary ideas he brought, and the mandates he created while alive to change the realities, the, con the way he dialogued, the way he asked his question to his math teacher and his Sanskrit teacher and the Kazi of the town, and the Brahman of the town. It was not creating a ruckus. It was creating a dialogue because he's pursuing a particular love affair is what I call it. So one of the things I like, for example, is his conversation with his math and Sanskrit teacher. He's asking more why questions. Today in, in, in education, we call these imaginative questions, not trivial questions, which are more what questions. Like... Uh, for example, what if the moon disappears? What will happen to the earth? Is that a good example? That's a what if question, which is another thing. So uh, if I may give an example sure. of that. So he's, there's a ceremony. Let's talk about ceremonies because we all go through ceremonies, whether we like them or not, they're part of the culture. Sometimes they have religious fervors. So there's a ceremony in his house. And uh, it's an initiation ceremony, how you enter into adulthood, you know. There's a Hindu culture, so he's born in the Hindu particular caste. And that ceremony is going on. Instead of saying, I'm not going to go through it, he says, tell me why I should go through it. And why was this not available for my sister who is older than me? So that's what he's doing. He wants people to process. He's not rejecting. This is how most Sikhs presented. And he never said that. He writes about it himself. That's how I know. And when I read that, he's saying, Tell me what it will do to me. Why was this not availed to others? Why is exclusively just for me? Like the logic of things. That's what we call it, like a simple logic. Uh, today we may get into Descartian logics, but it's a higher logic. Sometimes it even transcends the mystic logics. Okay. Yes. So it's, it's essentially trying to carry people with it rather than saying rejections and disruptions. I will let you continue the story, sir. <laughs> uh, so Sikhi has some mystical elements. Absolutely. And that's the, including in Guru Nanak's own, you know, so 1469 is when he's born. So that's the South Asia, what's happening at the time. You know, Mughal dynasty is about to get started. Babur has just attacked a town called Sadpur. I visited that. It's very interesting. And Guru Nanak protested against that. So that's a Guru Nanak you may not know. This is the historical Guru Nanak. He's protesting and the fight is between, they both have the same faith. They're both Muslims. But one is Pathan, the local ruler, the Lodi dynasty, and the one is uh, coming from Khorasan, uh, the area uh, sometimes between Iran and Afghanistan, that area we are coming from, right? And Guru Nanak witnesses the whole thing. And he questions it. And this is important, just to put it in perspective, it's like a genocidal campaign going on. And mostly the victims are women, what we call today collateral damage. And he lists them. He says, I'm feeling the pain of Hindu women, Thakrani women, the low caste women, and even the Muslim women who are reading the Qurans. Because that's who's getting killed and that's who's getting enslaved and violated, you know, the rapes included. And he, in fact, very powerfully writes, he says, I'm standing on the pile of dead bodies and I'm saying that this is the time to tell the truth, that this must stop. Nobody in South Asia, uh, no Sufi, no religious leader, even recorded a protest. He did, Guru Nanak did, and he was jailed for it. He spent time in jail. People didn't protest out of fear? Of course. Who's going to take on uh, what we now call the Mughals and the Pathans? Okay. Um, you know, when we speak about Mughal atrocities on the channel, 
often we're labeled as being right wing <laughs> because we're targeting mughals but this is yeah. so important that the mughals actually first targeted muslim brethren it, so it's i think those labels create a problem you know like like even the right wing is a label what we are saying is the religion is same where the fight is going on yeah. it's two men who in their power are violating everyone else yeah um, and gurunanak is protesting against what are you doing to what we call rayat or constituency today right the people you know we taught about babar in uh-huh. our history textbooks as the first mughal emperor we not taught all these things that's right because this is the part which is doesn't get recorded so for at the same time just so we don't get caught up in anti babar thing because this is not anti babar babar comes to see guru nanak in jail because you see one of the things in islam we have to understand babar is not a regular guy he is a scholar as well as a warrior they are taught with the particular trainings all the moguls went through incredible trainings actually the mogul emperors i should say badshah they were so he comes to see guru nanak and he sees that something ain't right here because in islam if you come across a spiritual individual you're not you're supposed to eliminate all the wrong things you're doing to them this is one of the trainings in islam and he sees there's something spiritual going on he's organizing people and they had given him harsh punishment which akki piece rahe he was given time that's the labor right you do in prison you give labors so he immediately releases him that they have imprisoned a wrong man he's saying the right thing but i don't like it but he's saying the right things but uh, how did he spot that uh, guru nanak ji was well you know the the traditions maintain and some secondary texts maintain that babar came to see him and he heard about it the speer you know in the in the vocabulary of islam that there's a peer who is saying this this is not just another protester as we would say today we stopped at the part where he meets emperor babar and then he uh, not just that uh, that actually happened so we're going back and forth on it we're yeah. not chronological right now best way to okay. podcast sure um well let's talk about uh, he was traveling the world mm. this this will be interesting he went to jagannath puri once i i got i got to dial you back okay to the moment he met uh, babar okay. so did babar release him yes he was released he okay. was released by babar in fact the folk tradition maintains that he then seeked guru nanak's blessing the ability to be able to rule india okay what does that mean now think about that i want to somebody who imprisoned you is now seeking your blessing so there is an acknowledgement happening here that there are wrongs we do there are crimes we commit classically we call them sins but there are crimes at the end of the day right you commit against individuals and against yourself so those acknowledgements are happening the ideas of forgiveness are happening and then working to create better systems is going on as well okay now i'll let you continue the story sure so part of the story is which i think will be very relevant today is he's having dialogues with multiple lifestyles because earlier and even today honestly you know everything becomes spiritual and political we run away from political and sometimes we overly hype the spiritual again these are the common words so he's going to those centers and having dialogues he had dialogues with yogis he has dial- he goes to jagannath puri temple where mrs gandhi was not allowed to enter it's that strict i'm just putting a perspective he goes to makka where a non muslim cannot enter enter and he's having conversations with them what does it take the genius is just one element at our levels but the communication ability the way you present yourself the way you're able to have a dialogue in disagreements that's guru nanak that's the real guru nanak which is available to us in guru granth sahib what he writes himself which is incredible so in his travels he's having these conversations but it's come there comes a point and this is something different about him which people may not know he founds a new city how many spiritual people do that this is why to call him just spiritual is very problematic what would you call him why do we need to call him anything don't he's his own model okay he actually is dealing with in the vocabulary which is written about him is that he is both raj and jogi raj yog mm. this is very interesting raj is political jog is union that's the literal meaning not just yoga sutras right that the meaning of jog is milap like jog yog exactly similar. same yog and jog is same it's okay. just a very linguistic variation right gotcha. so that's what he is he founds a new city called kartarpur now the question which someone like me i visited there i present on it now i create a whole presentation because i found the old records why did he do that all this is in pakistan 
in current Pakistan, you got to realize it's all Punjab. Yeah. And half of the Punjab in 47 is called West Punjab now, which is in Pakistan, which is a larger Punjab, by the way. Mm. And the other half, it's like a butterfly's wing. Mm. This may help you, this may help you and your audience understand certain things because it helped me. Actually, the map of Punjab, if you look at the original region of Punjab, looks like a butterfly. And one wing got clipped. Mm. That's part of the problem of Punjab. I think we were at the part of the story where you spoke about how he established his own city. Hmm, Kartarpur. So let's talk about Kartarpur. What was the purpose? So Guru Nanak started Kartarpur, right? Why did he have to do it if he's running around everywhere, talking to people, having dialogues, and changing certain minds too? But his job wasn't to change all the minds. One of the things which we discover is that he founded a new city because the people and the state, the policymakers at the time, it was more imperial and kings and chiefs, they wouldn't change the policies. So he says, let's look at the Ikhwankar paradigm, this oneness with a number one, not vagary of oneness which spelled out, and let's practice it here. So in that place in Kartarpur, I mean, the description given is the yogis came to see him, the jannis came to see him, the householders came to see him, but very few stayed there to get mentored. And those very few is the beginning of what we now call six. You know, they came from various cities. Many came to check him out. Many came to have a dialogue with him, but few stayed to get mentored and it did not include his two sons. So the trans, the, 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 the institutionalization of Sikhi, as we may call it, it's really not an organized religion per se. It was more of what trainings are needed in order to create, change the policies in the world. First policy is my relationship with the divine as an outgrowth of that, how to live in the community. So this idea of anti-racism, anti-sexism, these are the words we use today. He was practicing at Kartarpur. Equality. Equality is still very much a 20th century understanding we carry from a universal suffrage movement from United Nations, because somebody is still deciding no, that you are equal, we give you this rights now. Because we think from a legality angle now. Somebody is still deciding that. What he's saying is no. You, every human being on this earth is a product of divine gift. So from day one, there, there has to be zero tolerance for racism or sexism. That he practiced in Kartar. And six who stayed there, who got mentored in this, and eventually there's a transfer of leadership there. And this is the institution of Sikhi where one individual named Lena became Angad and we call him Guru Angad or the second Guru Nanak who perfected that. And he built that further in another city called Khadur. So the thing I want you to know is that every guru founded a new city. Mm. What does it take to plan a city? Think about that even today. We can't even figure out how to plan our own organization or a block. You know, so architecturally, economically, because the policies were not being shifted in other spaces on how to practice this oneness. This is a huge difference between Guru Nanak's system, that it is not just personal, it has a very large element of community, and not just community in idea as a utopian idea, but a lived realities. Mm. That's why you see the organization of Sikh faith and Sikh people in such organized way, because it got mandated by Guru Nanak himself. Mm. Well, to draw out some more context from the time, uh, historical, political context, so the Mughals had like started establishing themselves. This was where Babar and Sher Shah and mm -hmm. all that was going on in the Delhi area. Yeah, I'm assuming that Rajasthan had all the Rajput kings yeah. at uh, war with each other. This is what I have understood from history. Some had war, some in alliances. Depends on their allegiance, yes. Yeah. Uh, and possibly even the rest of India kind of had that kind of a scenario where it's either the Mughals or these little dynasties kind of up against each other or in alliance with each other. Mm -hmm. And whenever you refer to policies in what you're talking about Guru Nanak's time, you're talking about these kings. So the way the system works, right? So the emperor doesn't own all the land, right? Kings report to the emperor and chiefs report to the kings. So certain things, Badshah, your word, you're a ruler of a particular area, that's emperor, but under you are kings. Under kings are the chieftains. So when I'm referring to policy, this is the areas they lived in. Okay. Whatever the local domain was, they decided the policies. Okay. And policies were heavily decided by religious momentum of the past. 
with religious fervors they still are very political because policy making is political they just need endorsement of the religious authorities okay just like today even in america you know why do they always have a reverend there billy graham worked with seven presidents in america regardless of whether they were republicans or democrats it's true globally this is why the spirituals so called and politicians so called they're always conspiring with each other to control masses by the way gurunanak wrote this I actually want to mention this explicitly. He says, "People who are just peers, and people who are just mirs. Mir is a short of Amir, the political head. It's a Persian word. Both are Persian words." And he wrote this. He like people who are just doing one or the other. They actually work with each other to control the masses, <laughs> and that's the problem. And this is why Sikhs have a phrase called "miri piri," which means become equally spiritual and equally political. So mm-hmm. you're aware of the both. Mm. the equivalent of like a raj rishi like that something the, like that which earlier i said was a raj yog idea mm. yeah. okay yeah. uh now i will let you expand on uh guru nanak dev ji's kind of later life what was happening in kartarpur kartarpur he's farming okay kartarpur he's training what we today call next in line what we call our exit plans <laughs> Oh, yeah. like as in succession succession planning he is also creating institutionalizations of what we are saying what is that we believe in so he wrote those because you see in indologies as well as everywhere in the world people think everything is biological he's very aware of that so he's making sure his thought and what he believes in his experience uh, gets recorded and so his kids and their descendants do not dilute it because they didn't get the guruship his both of his sons didn't get guruship what were they up to against him they started alternative religions if you ask me really yeah like udasi order is one of his sons in fact there's a great lesson in there even then and this is what he's teaching through his life that they may not agree with him there's no condemnation but it's such a clarity is there they are not the right next in line to continue the sect thought mm. so that's the level of clarity and love at the same time so if you enjoyed this video make sure you check out this playlist for more videos just like this it's the artist clips